Well, good evening. We're back again. Uh, lovely to have you with us on Wednesday evening as we come to God's Word. And uh, we're back in the book of Psalms again. Uh, if you're available, you're very welcome to join with us for our Zoom prayer meeting just after this at a quarter past eight. You'll need sign-in details. But if you don't have those already, text me and I can text them back to you without a problem. Um, we're reading from Psalm 19 this evening. It's a brilliant psalm. Well, they all are, of course. And uh, it's a psalm of David, and uh, let's read it together. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens he has pitched a tent for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. By them is your servant warned, and keeping of them there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Forgive my hidden faults. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let's bow together for a wee moment in prayer. Lord, we thank you for how you are speaking in these days and in all ages. We thank you, O God, for this creation out around us that speaks to us of the majesty of the God who planned it and put it in place and sustains it. And we thank you for your precious word here in black and white for us that there you speak to us in such a living and mighty way. And Lord, that's what we ask for this evening, that as we come to this word, that you would open our minds and our eyes and our hearts by your Holy Spirit, and that you would deal graciously and personally and powerfully with us for the glory of your own great name. For we ask it through Christ our Saviour. Amen. And so the uh, title this evening really is God is Speaking. And the Lord is speaking very powerfully all through the generations and here in our day. God is speaking if we are listening and particularly through two particular channels. Uh, speaking through his world or you could even say his universe and also speaking through his word or the scriptures. These are both living books. You look out around at the creation, it's a living book, a book that is alive. Look, you look down at this precious written word and it is a living book, a book that is on fire. Both of these are beautiful books, the, the creation out around us and this living word of God. Both of them are very visible and amenable to us. Both of them are absolutely available to us. You don't need a bank account. You don't need a pin number. You don't need a smartphone. Look out around at the beauty of his creation and his world and look down then at the beauty of our God and his word. And so let's look at those two aspects this evening. I'm going to spend more time actually on the first one because the second one you've possibly heard uh, preached on more often. But God's message in his world. Verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. 
I'm from a science background myself. I love science. But there's one of the things I don't like, and that is when I hear people saying science versus the Bible, as if the two were somehow opposed and couldn't be reconciled. Because actually, as you study science, deeply and with an honest mind, you will see crystal clearly the mark of intelligent design. It's unavoidable, it's inescapable, it's there throughout. Now, in any scientific investigation or exploration or experiment, if the scientist, because of any personal prejudice that he has, at the very outset rules out a possible explanation for what he's going to find, then that is simply bad science. I think of scientists as, in a sense, detectives. Things that are there and they're trying to find them for us and reveal them to us and get to the bottom of it. And uh, the illustration I use at times is, imagine a crime has been committed in our village and the detective is called in to deal with it. And so he says, well, at the very outset, to save us some time here, well, this obviously wasn't committed by a policeman, so we can rule them out. We're not even going to consider that. And that will save us a bit of time for one thing. And like it's, it's he says, but it's, it's unthinkable that a policeman would have committed this crime. And then you imagine a policeman did commit the crime. And our detective is busy and he's gathering all this evidence and he's picking up his fingerprints and he's not just managing to hit it at all. He's getting things that are close and he may even put the wrong person behind bars because right from the outset he has closed his mind to something. And so it is with investigating the origin of the universe. Good science rules out nothing from personal prejudice. I say, do your experiments, examine the facts, and let those, as in all good science, lead you to the answer. However much that answer may be contrary to our expectation, however much that answer even may fly in the face of accepted theory to date. And when you think about it, it is only because of this open and honest and unfettered approach by the greatest scientists through the centuries in all fields of science. It is only this honest approach and through that that the greatest discoveries of all time were made. Scientists who were ready to think outside the box, who were ready to think the unthinkable. And I'm not saying that in order to explore the origins of the universe and so on, that to be that sort of scientist, you need to believe in a divine creator. But what I am saying is that you do need to have honesty and to be openly prepared for wherever your investigations will lead. And so I say, do your science thoroughly. Examine, examine the human eye. Incredible it is. Just examine the human eye. Think properly about it. Examine it scientifically. Examine the human brain and those billions of interconnections. Incredible. Just think honestly about it. Examine the human fingerprint. What, seven billion of us on the earth? And no two of us have the same fingerprint. Is that even possible? And the scientists say, well, it is because it's there. Consider DNA, the uniqueness of our DNA. Consider a, a human embryo just at that moment of conception. And in there are millions of instructions already. Even the instruction, what age that person's going to go bald at to take a kind of a facetious one. But you can see how many instructions are in there. And look at the world out around us. Watch a peregrine falcon swooping at 200 miles an hour. Incredible. Investigate a bee colony 
and see what's going on in there. Research the precise architecture and organization of the solar system and a way beyond it. And surely, honest investigation, honest scientific investigation, can't lead you to the conclusion that all of this is the result of an explosion and a series of random accidental events. If you state that, if you look at all these incredible things and then you say, this is all by accident over billions of years, then you've stepped outside science. You've gone into the realm of theory and belief and even blind belief. You've taken a huge leap of faith that has jumped beyond the facts that are in front of you. And so I say to you, whether you're a scientist or not, don't ignore the evidence. Don't listen to men's guesses who have been only able to find a perfect match for the fingerprint because they say the one who put the fingerprint there doesn't exist. We're not even prepared to consider that. But just listen to the voice of God because God is speaking. And it's a very clear message, God's message. Look at verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they display knowledge. Did you hear the verbs in there? Declare, proclaim, pour forth, display. Because this is not a, a vague, misty, hazy message. Count the stars. Every one of them speaks of the majesty of God. God is speaking. Gaze on the, the sunrise and even take out your watch and time it and see how precisely it's there at the right time. God is speaking. Face the vastness and the organization of this great universe and ask honestly, where did it come from? God is speaking. And God says, be still and know that I am God. This is a clear message. It's a declaration, it's a proclamation, it's a pouring forth, it's a display. God lights up the skies majestically and indeed in his word he tells us that he leaves us without excuse. That we dare not say he doesn't exist. It's a clear message, it's also a universal message. Verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech, night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. God's message in the sky is for every human being. You don't need a particular language you don't even need to be able to hear. The Italian, the German, the Malaysian, the Indian, the Aborigine, the Eskimo look up and they all see the same sky and they all hear the same mighty message. All are confronted by the same majestic God. There is no speech or language, says the scripture, where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth. Verse 2, day after day, they pour forth speech, these heavens, night after night. They display knowledge, day after day, night after night. From your cradle, cradle to your grave, every single day and night, God speaks through the stars, through the sun, through the creation, out around the us. At the time of the French Revolution, uh, those who were involved in it said to the, the, the people, we're going to tear down all your churches and your steeples. And a little peasant is reported to have said, but you'll have to leave the stars. And there isn't, isn't that a great message for us at this time? Because there's so many getting uptight and saying, we have to be in a church building. My God doesn't live in church buildings. My God lives in this universe. 
And let's get a sense of the majesty and sovereignty and greatness of our God and the universality of his voice and his working. It's a clear message. It's a universal message. It's a majestic message. Verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim his handiwork. The skies speak to us of a God who is glorious and majestic and mighty and special. We see a God who is enthroned. And the psalmist begins to speak to us here then of the sun in verse 4. He says, in the heavens he has pitched a tent for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from his heat. And as he begins speaking, about the sun. At the same time, he is thinking of another sun, the spotless sun, S-O-N, S-O-N, spotless son of God who went to Calvary because he's the great bridegroom. He is the champion who has triumphed at the cross and who is coming again in his majesty. And folks, when we gaze on the wonder of creation and are dazzled by the brilliance of the sun and see the majesty of God, always our thoughts must turn to Jesus, the dazzling King of Kings, returned in triumph from the cross, seated in majesty and coming in glory. What a saviour! Is he your saviour? A majestic message and also it's a searching message. Verse 6. The sun that rises at one end of the heavens makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from its heat. Nothing is hidden. God is speaking. Look up into the sky tonight. If I can't think of the clouds out tonight or not. I think it's a clear evening. Look up into the sky and remember that nothing is hidden from his sight. You know how we talk about stars as being so many light years away? You understand that? That if you're looking at a star and it is three light years away, what's actually happening is that the light that left that star three years ago is arriving just now at my eye. Now, if you can turn that on its head and you imagine you go out to that distance three light years away with a very powerful telescope and look back in at the earth, what will you see? You will see you three years ago, doing what you were doing. Or if you move to somewhere 10 light years away in this universe with a very powerful telescope, you know, we're imagining this, of course. But what will you see? You will see you 10 years away ago doing just as you were doing. And so you can see that all we've ever done can be seen at this very moment as if it's just happening. You just need to go to the right position in space. How much more can God who made the stars see all of this? God is speaking. Nothing is hidden from his sight. Message to all of us. God's speaking through his world. And then a wee word, and we're going to have to move on quickly through this because our time's moving on with us. God's message in his word. We've gazed in the heavens, now we go to this marvellous book and say very simply that God's word brings us revival. Look at verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. Verse 8, the precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. Simply the word of God lifts you when you're down. God uses this precious book to breathe new life into those who read it. And so this, the lost sinner comes and he reads this book and God breathes eternal life into his heart. The one who is depressed and downcast comes to this book and God comes and breathes in this, this lift for us. The one who is sad and heartbroken comes to this book and God comes and brings comfort to us. The one who is anxious and worried comes to this book and God God comes and reassures the one who is backslidden comes to this precious book and God turns him around again. What is your need this very evening? In what ways are you cast out? In what ways do you need to be lifted? Come and let God speak to you and let the Psalms, this Psalm, flood you with the joy of the Lord. Verse 8, the precepts of the Lord are right giving joy to the heart. God's word brings us revival. God's word brings us revelation. 
opens our eyes. Verse 7, the end of the verse, second half of the verse, the statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Verse 8, the precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Verse 11, by them is your servant warned, and keeping of them there is great reward. God opens our eyes through the scriptures. He lets us see things that we could never see without the scriptures. He lets us see Jesus and get to know Jesus. And as we read God's word, we begin to understand things that we could never even have imagined. Things about life. Things about reasons for what's happening. Things about heaven. Yes, we even see into heaven. We glimpse beyond the grave. We see what's worth going for and what's worth watching out for. Verse 11, by them is your servant warned. In keeping of them there's great reward. Oh, God opens our eyes through the scriptures. He brings us revival and revelation. He brings us rest. Verse 9, the fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. Here we live in a world that's passing away with nothing really to cling to, drifting in the sense in the ocean, we have sinking in the sinking sand. And the Bible brings us to rest on solid things because it is in the scriptures that we find the marvelous promises of God. And that we come to see the things that endure for eternity. And that we find an anchor for the storms and rest for our turmoil. And a solid rock for terrible times. And a sure and certain hope. God anchors us when we come to the word. God brings us to rest on solid things. He says, be still and know that I am God. And also through his written word, God brings us riches. Verse 10, reading of the scriptures here, the psalmist says they are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. He says, how can I describe this precious book, the Bible, the written word of God? And he thinks of the sweetest food that he knows. Honey, the most luxuriant exotic taste that he's ever encountered and he says this precious word of God is sweeter by far how can he describe the word of God he turns the most costly extravagant substance that he knows on the face of the earth gold and he says this precious word far outshines it there's more wealth in this book than in all the banks in Switzerland. Here is real wealth. And so tonight, folks, God is speaking. Speaking through his word, his world, this beautiful universe. Speaking through his word, this precious book. God is speaking. Are you listening? He's speaking through this universe with a message that is clear that is universal for everyone that is majestic that is searching are you listening and he's speaking through this precious book here to meet you at your very point of need to bring you revival bring new life to your heart and your soul to bring you revelation to open your eyes to see things you've never seen before to bring you rest to help you to rest solidly and securely and to bring you riches infinitely more than anything this world can possibly bring to you. God is speaking. Are you listening? Let's pray. So our God, we thank you for your clear voice through the creation around us every day. The beauty of this world and this universe. The intricate design of it. That if we're being honest at all, points us to the intelligent designer. And Lord, we thank you that you're speaking to us every day that we open this precious book. Every time we come to it, speaking, O oh God, in a powerful and a precious way. O oh, speak on, we pray, 
and give us eyes to see and ears to hear, a mind to understand and a heart to receive all that you're saying to your people. For we ask it in the Saviour's precious name. Amen. So thanks for joining with us. And as I say, our, our prayer meeting is just shortly now and you're welcome to join with us by Zoom.